A Canadian family by the name of Forsh were on a two-week holiday. It took them from Prince Albert in Saskatchewan to Jasper and Banff National Parks and along the way visited Medicine Hat and Cypress Hills Provincial Park and then continuing west to Vancouver and British Columbia. The following strange incident took place in a small family-run hotel in Alberta where the family had stayed on their journey west. It was around 6pm on a Friday when the family arrived at the hotel and were informed that dinner would be served in one hour. So the family went upstairs to unpack and discuss the remainder of their journey and what route they should take next on the way to Vancouver. They decided they would head to Fort McLeod, then follow Provincial Highway 3 to Vancouver and stay overnight at Trail in British Columbia. After dinner, the family took a drive through the surrounding area to take in as much of the beautiful sights of Alberta's wilderness during their short stay there. They arrived back at the hotel around 10pm, were all fairly tired, so they went to bed as they had a busy schedule on Saturday. The family had a 14-year-old daughter by the name of Sonia, who, if she had the opportunity, would sleep in late, but her mother had to wake her at 8am every morning as it was essential that she receive her insulin shot, as Sonia was a diabetic. As Sonia had a room of her own, it was arranged that reception would give Sonia an 8am wake-up call on the two mornings the family would be staying there, so that Sonia could give herself an insulin injection, along with the breakfast that would be left outside her door. Before going to bed, Mr Force reminded reception about the 8am morning call, and they must let it ring until the phone was picked up, and they were assured that everything would be taken care of. The following morning, Sonia duly received her 8 a.m. call, and as she was still very tired, begrudgingly lifted the receiver. The light voice said, Good morning, this is your 8 a.m. wake-up call. Your breakfast will be outside your door in five minutes. After injecting herself with insulin, she opened the curtains to see grey skies and pouring rain. She then opened the door and found her breakfast sitting outside. The following evening, Sonia went to bed expecting to receive her 8 a.m. call in the morning. The phone rang and the usual pleasant voice advised her that it was her 8 a.m. wake-up call and that breakfast would be outside her door in five minutes. For some unusual reason, Sonia was even more tired than the previous morning and found it extra hard to drag herself out of bed and she could hardly keep her eyes open. Eventually, she was able to drag herself out of bed and put on a dressing gown. After injecting herself, she headed to the door to get her breakfast. As she opened the door, she looked outside, only to see a vacant carpet. So where was her breakfast? She looked up and down the hallway, but everything was deathly quiet. Believing they must be running late, she closed the door and decided to take a shower. After a 50-minute shower, she dressed and put on some warm clothes, and again headed to the door, expecting to find a breakfast there, and hoped that it would not have gone cold but she again found herself staring at an empty carpet and no breakfast. Sonia was now extremely annoyed and looked up and down the hall to see if anyone else had received their breakfast, but there was nothing there. She then walked down to her parents' room, expecting them to be up and about, and when she opened their door, she found them fast asleep. Sonia laughed at the sight of her parents still in bed and decided to rouse them by jumping up and down on their bed, shouting, Come on, guys, it's time to get up. Her mother was the first awake and just stared at her in a daze and asked what time it was. Sonia said that it must be at least 8.30 as she'd been up for a while. Her mother then looked around for a travel alarm clock and said, Oh Sonia, it's barely 5 in the morning. Sonia said, It can't be because I had my 8 a.m. wake up call, but I never got my breakfast. Mrs. Force said in a grumpy manner that someone must have been playing a joke on her and she intended to make a strong complaint to reception and told Sonia to go back to bed. When Sonia returned to her room, she decided to check her watch and it was showing 5.13am, where Sonia was more upset than angry. Who would do such a thing? She had taken her insulin three hours before she needed to, but fortunately it would not have had any adverse effects on her but it was not something that should be played around with. And besides, she was desperate for something to eat. Shortly after 8am, the family approached the reception desk where there was a well-dressed woman who looked to be in her early 30s. The receptionist addressed them in the usual polite manner and asked how she could help them. Mrs. Force then proceeded to tell her that she was very angry. The receptionist realizing something was wrong went red in the face. 
Mrs. Foy said my daughter was meant to receive an ANM alarm call. Ah, oh, yes, said the receptionist. We're running a little late this morning and I was just about to make the call. But Mrs. Force interrupted her, stating she did get the call, but it was at 5am this morning. This is very serious. The receptionist looked equally appalled and said there must be some terrible mistake. Mrs. Force then asked her daughter to explain what had happened. Sonia then went into detail, telling her exactly what had happened that morning and there was no breakfast. She had not realised how early it was until she entered her parents' room and found it was only 5am. Mrs. Forsh wanted to speak to someone higher, as they believed they were owed an apology. The young woman could only shake her head, looking baffled. She told Mrs. Forsh that there was nobody at reception until 8am, and then telephones were switched off all night, so that none of the guests would be disturbed by constantly ringing phones. So there is no way that the phone call could have been made at 5am. The young woman's eyes suddenly lit, and she said, Oh wait, your daughter is room number six, right? And Sonia nodded her head, but protested, asking her what a room nom had to do with anything. The receptionist then bent down, lifted up a book that was under the desk. She then offered a sincere apology, stating that this has happened many times before, but it only happens in room number six. A few years ago, a desk clerk died in the hotel, and still takes his job rather seriously every now and then. As you can see, written in the book, there have been many other people over the years that have made comments as to what happened to them in room 6. Sonia was asked to write her own experience in the book, along with all of the others. It was at this stage that Sonia looked at the receptionist in horror, saying, You mean to tell me that my phone call I received at 5am this morning was made by a ghost? The receptionist then looked at her with a serious expression and said, Quite definitely yes.